So in liquid solutions, side particles or ions disrupt the non-covalent solvent-solvent attractions, thereby creating changes in various properties of the pure solvent. For example, if a solid is added to a pure substance, the boiling point is higher and the melting point is lower than that of the pure substance. How much these properties change depend on the concentration of the solute used. Colligative properties are those properties that depend solely on the concentration of the solute used. They depend on the number or amount of solute particles used. They don't depend on the nature or type of particle used. Now, four major colligative properties are known. Vapor pressure, osmotic pressure, boiling point elevation, and melting point depression. I'm going to briefly talk about the first colligative property, vapor pressure. If you want to go into more detail about vapor pressure, check out my link below. So vapor pressure is simply the pressure due to the gas molecules found in dynamic equilibrium with their liquid molecules. Now we see that adding non-volatile solute decreases vapor pressure according to Rolt's law. Now if you want to learn more about Rolt's law, check out my link below. Now recall that a non-volatile solute is a solute that will not evaporate. So let's see two systems. We have two systems. The first system is the system before we add our non-volatile solute. The second system is after the addition of the non-volatile solute. Before addition, a certain vapor pressure is created due to the molecules found in the space above. After addition, some of the solid molecules will, will be replaced by the non-volatile solute, and so less will evaporate, and therefore the vapor pressure will be less. Now adding volatile solute, or molecules that do evaporate, increases vapor pressure, according to a modified version of Rolt's law. And that's simply because now we have the solid molecules evaporating and the volatile solute molecules evaporating. So the final pressure is the sum of the two pressures. The second colligative property is called the boiling point. The boiling point is the temperature at which the liquid molecules have enough kinetic energy to escape into the gas state. Now this occurs when the vapor pressure of the liquid equals the atmospheric pressure. So we see that the boiling point is related to the vapor pressure. Adding non-volatile solute lowers vapor pressure and now a higher temperature is required to raise our vapor pressure to that final atmospheric pressure. So more energy is required. And in fact we could use a formula to find the change in the boiling point. So change in boiling point is equal to a constant Kb, which is related to the substance being boiled, times the molality, so moles over kilogram of solvent, times I. I is called Van Ta factor, and this is the number of particles a single solute molecule dissociates into. So if our solute is sodium chloride, we see that sodium chloride dissociates into exactly two particles. So our I in an ideal solution will be 2. In a non-ideal solution, there's something called ion pairing, or the momentary aggregation of ions in a solution. And this will cause I to slightly lower. And that means in an ideal solution, this will be 2. In a non-ideal solution, this will be slightly below 2. The third colligative property is called a freezing point, or the melting point. This is the temperature at which the liquid molecules lose the kinetic energy and cannot sustain the liquid state, and they form a crystalline structure called a solid. Now the freezing or melting point is not related to vapor pressure the same way that boiling points are. By adding a solid or an impurity to a pure substance, we increase entropy and make it difficult to form a crystal structure. Therefore, more energy needs to be taken away from our system. And this means that our freezing and melting point lowers. 
Now that melt by which our freezing and melting point lowers can be found by a similar formula. The change in temperature is equal to a new constant that depends on the substance being melted or frozen times the molality of our uh, uh, substance times I, the number of particles a solid dissociates into. Now we have to be careful with freezing point depression because adding a solute to a pure substance will only decrease the freezing point to a certain extent. Eventually our solvent will become our impurity because if we add enough solute the amount of solute will surpass the amount of solvent. And when that happens adding any more solute will actually make our freezing point rise and our melting point rise. The fourth colligative property is called osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the tendency of water or some other solvent to flow into an area with a higher solute concentration. Now to demonstrate osmotic pressure, let's build a system. In this system, we have a cell that's enveloped in a semi-permeable membrane. Now this membrane allows the flow of water, but it does not allow any solute molecules to pass through. Now on the outside, we have many more solute molecules than on the inside. So let's see what entropy tells us about such a system. Well, entropy dictates that a system will always try, uh, strive to even out. And that means in this system, the solute molecules will want to move inside the cell. But remember, because this is a semi-permeable membrane, site molecules will not be able to go inside. And that means instead, water will try to even out the system. And water will flow from a lower concentration to a higher solute concentration. So we can define osmotic pressure in a second way. Osmotic pressure is the pressure that needs to be applied to a membrane to stop the flow of solvent into an area of a higher solute concentration. So whenever we talk about an ideal solution that has a very low solute concentration, we can find osmotic pressure on one side of the equation or on one side of the membrane by using this formula. And this formula states that osmotic pressure is equal to von Hoff factor, which is the number of particles a single molecule or a single solute molecule breaks into, times molarity of our solution times the gas constant, or R, times temperature in Kelvin. Now, whenever we talk about osmotic pressure, we also talk about osmotic potential. Now, any pure substance, such as pure water, is automatically given an osmotic potential of zero. And any impure substance, so if we add a solute to water, we give it an osmotic potential of less than zero. So it has a negative osmotic potential and we define the flow of a solvent from a high osmotic potential to a low osmotic potential. So since the outside has many more solute molecules, it has a more negative osmotic potential, and that means uh, water will flow from a lower osmotic potential to a higher osmotic potential, or from the inside to the outside. 